horizon is wide and the highway is calling. That means it's time for another episode of American Road Trip Talk. I'm your host, Gary Mance, with a welcome and an invitation to travel the byways and backroads of yesteryear, searching for America in every incomparable mile. Welcome once again, everyone. Always glad to have you with us and glad to have producer Eric Ryder at the board. He makes sure that we stay in our lane, you know. There is an RV craze going on right now in America. Industry insiders say that seldom, if ever, have they seen anything like it. I think it has something to do with the pandemic loosening its grip and the traveling public is raring to go. We've heard the phrase pent up demand. Well, it's certainly affecting the RV industry. We have a gentleman here today who knows more than any 10 people I could name about that, the implications of all of the above. And we're going to look forward to discussing all of what this means as people prepare to travel in the summer of 2021. School's out, everybody, and the pandemic is loosening. And as a result, we're going to go out and see the country. That is our topical destination for today. This is American Road Trip Talk. We'll be back with the interview right after these messages. Chart your course to visit Alliance, Nebraska. Fun, safe, family-friendly, and pet-friendly activities make Alliance one adventure you and your family don't want to miss. Come for Carhenge and stay to experience our many other free attractions, craft brews, and local dining. Yes, all of the attractions are free. Shop along our historic brick streets, too. Carhenge is a 2020 Top 10 Worldwide Award winner by TripAdvisor. Unique, quirky, and a pop culture icon. Carhenge is open year-round to visitors who love to experience something different. You won't find a to-scale replica of England's Stonehenge quite like this anywhere else in the world. Our little slice of country is your place to relax before you head to the hills or mountains with all of the small town charm your soul needs. For more information, please go to visitalliance.com. Hi, everybody. This is Anson Williams from Happy Days. And I want to bring attention to a life-saving product called Alert Drops. Drowsy driving is one of the most catastrophic problems in America, and Alert Drops will stop it. Kids studying in college, drinking too much caffeine, overloading on these energy drinks, they end up in the hospital. Alert Drops will stop it. What is Alert Drops? Alert Drops is a simple spray on the tongue made out of citric acid, sour lemon, and water, co-created with my uncle, Dr. Henry Heimlich, creator of the Heimlich Maneuver, who said, Anson, alert drives will save more lives than the maneuver. Whether you are driving, whether you are studying, whether you're just a tired mom, whenever you need to be alert, get alert drops. A simple spray on the tongue, nothing in your system, and you're naturally awake, naturally alert. It's scientifically proven. It's doctor approved. Again, it's natural. It's been honored by the United States Congress. Go to alertjobs.com. Very important. Go to alertjobs.com and stay safe. If you've given travel the green light, then hit the road to Bowling Green, Kentucky, the home of Corvette. From high-speed attractions like the National Corvette Museum and Beach Bend Park to outdoor favorites like Lost River Cave and Zipline or family-owned farms and wineries, Bowling Green is geared for fun. Just be sure not to try and fill up at the historic Standard Oil Station in the downtown district. Request your free guide and start planning today at visitbgky.com. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Trip Talk, everybody. We're going to get in the RV. We're going to take our home with us, our home on wheels. I've never done it myself. I look forward forward to it. I get more excited the more I hear about it. There's an RV craze going on in America right now. Incredible numbers, people buying, people renting them, people looking for campgrounds that are filling up fast. Today, we talk with Brian Demo, a retired U.S. Marine helicopter mechanic who has transitioned to a mobile master RV technician. After spending a little over a year RV traveling full-time, Brian decided he wanted to work on RVs while he was in the campgrounds to make extra money. That's resourceful. When COVID hit, he joined Just Answer, a popular and very useful website, as a way to continue his work digitally. And now he answers hundreds of questions a week from RV owners and renters around the world. 
In addition to working on Just Answer, Brian writes about his family's RV adventures on OurNeverEndingSummers.com. So we're very happy for the first time to welcome to our show, Brian Demo. Brian, welcome. Thank you very much. Great to be here with y'all. Well, let me start by saying thank you so much for your service to our country. And you are now getting the opportunity in a few different ways to have an impact on the traveling public, in addition to seeing so much of the country. Right now, it's a great time to be Brian Demo. <laughs> it is good times, I got to say. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> when we talk about your backstory, I think our listeners would love to hear this. Former Marine, serving your country, and then the RV world opened up to you. Tell us about that. So I would retired and I did what a lot of veterans do. I went and started looking for a job and just living. We were living still in Southern California, the last base I was stationed at at Camp Pendleton. And a job I was working on, the contract was coming to an end and money was now going to be just our retirement. So we had to kind of come up with some ideas on what we were going to do to live. So my wife, saw me come home real frustrated one day and she asked if you could do anything tomorrow what would it be and I said travel I didn't even hesitate just quickly I just want to travel so she said okay let's do this and I thought it was the greatest joke she ever came up with I was like you're funny uh, but she was dead serious so uh, we talked about it a little bit and next thing you know Three and a half months later, we are buying our very first RV that we still have to this day. We sold 95% of all of our belongings, and we got on the road and traveled full-time with our daughter in tow. There are many, many people listening, just green with envy, that you, A, that you would have the courage to do this, taking such initiative, and to be able to experience this kind of change in lifestyle, to go mobile and to see so much of this country and god bless your wife for having the the guts to say hey so what do you want to do here you know here we are what would you most like to do that's a good wife i love I that lucky. i so got lucky with her and I, I don't know how she tolerates me but the the woman is just amazing she does great things and uh it, we i could not ask for any better of that whole situation because that that moment changed the trajectory of my life, it put me in a better place, uh, I, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It got me very, very, very close to my family. I mean, 200 square feet of living space for uh, 365 days is uh, one definite way to get real close and know your family really well. But it really made my life better to do it. So good to hear that. It's good to know as well, you talk about timing, Brian, you and your family appear to have caught this RV, this expansion of RV travel. People are calling it a craze at the flood. This is the time to be doing it as RV travel is going to be so dominant this summer, maybe in an unprecedented fashion. Campgrounds are filling up. Where are we going to put all these people? How do you account for all of this. It works beautifully for you and your family, but how did we get to this place in terms of that style of travel? I think it had to do a lot with the pandemic. Everyone was cooped up for a year. And then the idea of doing vacations, but hotels still saying, hey, look, we, we can't take you. We're only at 50% capacity. And then the price points were still extremely high. Then the other options, if you were to, you know, start doing vacation planning on your own, just going through the internet searches, a lot of times an RV ad would pop up and the RV dealerships and RV manufacturers did a very good job of advertising and putting the money in the space, which planted some really good seeds. Well, they planted them a little too well because inventory is extremely hard to get your hands on right now in the new and the used market. So both of those combining together, you're creating the, the perfect storm. I can't have it, but I really want it. You know, people are really going to start keep looking and it's driving that one step further to make that a reality, in my opinion. I think the other piece that goes with that as well is you uh, see people talk or hear some people talk about these RV vacations. It's basically you're not living out of your suitcase like you would be in a hotel. You pull into the campground and all your stuff is still there. You have your kitchen, you have your shower, bathroom, bed, very comfortable. And you open up your front door and there you are. You could be on the beach in, in Florida or you could be in the Redwood National Forest 
you could be out in the desert in Death Valley. Anywhere that your heart desires could be your backyard. And I think that has become a very big appealing feature to a lot of people for vacationing. It is. And I think it helps explain, among other things, the great popularity of the picture Nomad Land. Whether they're in an RV or not, people want to go mobile. There's something about this adventure of the open road that really has always been with us, or, or what's a Route 66 for, right? Both, both the actual road and the TV show, for example. There, but when we talk about Nomad Land, that, that's a spirit of travel. It's, it's really answering a call of the wild, it seems to me. I would agree with that. It's the sense of adventure. I mean, we don't have the manifest destiny or westward expansion. We don't have that piece from before. All we can do is grab a piece of that history as we're out traveling and get a sense of it. You know, the, the, gone are those days of the Sunday drive. Now you're in an RV or you're doing that vacation thing. Now you can grasp that. You can feel it. You have that tangible. And be nice to see outside of where you live normally. It's good to go out and see the world, see what else is out there. Yes, well, what else and who else? Absolutely, it, it, with the great diversity that America offers. What interests me also, Brian, is that it used to be, and we're really talking about a stereotype here, living the stereotype as we live the dream. You would have an older couple. They saved up their money. They were able to buy a nice RV enough to meet their needs. Maybe the grandkids are with them, maybe not, but they get out on the open road. From what I gather, there is a trend now among younger people who have the means to buy or rent an RV because they want to get in on this craze. I could absolutely see that, especially with the campgrounds that we visited over our time that we were traveling. Even when I'm going to campgrounds now to do RV repairs, there are many younger uh, people that are showing up with rigs and are calling in with, hey, this, or we got this issue, how do we fix it? And when I get to talking to them, like, hey, tell me more about, I wanna know, I wanna know what your travels are. Uh, I always love hearing the stories. I, I love seeing their faces light up, but you can really see that they are gravitating towards that. And one young couple I spoke with, I'd say probably it was last month. One of the pieces for them was, it was cheaper for them to live in an RV and travel than it was for them to stay in the city where their jobs were. They know they're going to stay remote working uh, with their companies. That's already been written into their plans and that piece. So for them, it was, why should we stay here and pay all this money in a mortgage and not be able to do things versus getting on the road, living our lives, doing our jobs, but actually living our life. That has adventure and, and uh not being penny wise and pound foolish, just the opposite, being very pragmatic and sensible about one's finances with the cost of living in so many places being as high as it is. I think in terms of travel too, this was several years ago, I went to, I live in Sarasota, Florida, so it's two hours away to get to uh, Walt Disney World. And I do enjoy going there from time to time. I stayed in a cabin and a short walk away from where my wife and I were staying, we saw numerous people, and this was at Christmas time. They were there in their RVs for the season. So they, they paid up and they set up shop, set up home. And I saw all these Christmas decorations, which were Disney themed, amazingly enough. They were out there enjoying all the Disney World had to offer, but it was clear that in their rented space, they set up a lifestyle that was open to all who would come by, and yet they had their cars in many cases with them so that they could get out and travel all over the place and return to this home that they had for a while in the midst of a magical kingdom. Oh, that is such a great setup. And that is one of the brilliant, booming things down there in the uh, Orlando area. My, uh, my mother is down there. We go down routinely from up here in the Panhandle. Uh, and we love staying down at Fort Wilderness. Disney did a great job with their campground. It's just a wonderful way to uh, to still get the Disney magic while staying in your RV. But there is also in that area people that are renting RVs um, from some of the big name companies. I believe what Cruise America or uh, I believe El Monte RV. There's a few of those names that you'll see those uh, rigs inside the campground where people are renting the RV and camping at Disney. 
and they're still doing their vacation with their car or using uh, the local transport. There's also down the road, um, you have a couple of the other big name companies, I believe it's Thousand Trails. They have a few campgrounds there as well that the people will do the exact same thing. They'll rent a coach or the full timers are there for a season and they're doing that exact one. And it's brilliant. It's a, an absolutely smart way to do it. And the owners that are not using their RV currently in that area are also utilizing the rental market by renting out their personal RV for people to use either in that area or to take on a road trip uh, to experience RVing. If you're going to rent it out, if not now, when, right? The exactly. demand is high. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And Fort Wilderness is exactly the place I was talking about. It was great to reminisce there for a moment. With all of the places to visit there and all the travel, I mean, you can go thousands of miles from where you reside, or maybe you have a mobile lifestyle going or you're traversing the entire country, uh, all four directions and seeing as much as you can. I know one couple got in an RV, actually bought it, and they started out in Seattle, Washington, went up to Alaska, came back down, which involved part of British Columbia as well, and then uh, made their way down to Florida where we had Christmas dinner together. And then they went back home to Washington. And can you imagine all the places they saw in between? This was the product, however, of a great deal of strategizing. They were planning, they were financing all along the way, and they had a wonderful time. That leads me to ask you, Brian, when people are doing this kind of thing, you answer hundreds of questions a week from people all around the world. What do you advise people to do in order to finance their dream? Because there's the dream stage, you know, but then you have to find a way to make all of that happen. So that can be a really interesting conversation and it can go many different ways. So what I've seen is you need to kind of have an idea of where you're going to camp. So if you know a perfect example is we'll go on that, we'll reverse that road trip. Let's go from here in Florida. Let's head to Seattle. So if you're going to cut across the country, you know what states you're going to hit. You need to have an idea of where you're going to stay. So my normal rule is I do not want to drive more than five hours a day. That's just my rule. I don't like going longer than that in my RV, but that's how we go. So with the five hours, I know that I drive 60 miles an hour in my RV. So if I'm going to do that, I know I'm going to get about 300 miles. So within that, I'm going to plan a couple of deviation routes and a couple of campgrounds. Normally, I'm going to make a reservation at the campground that I'm going to go to. If that one is just a stopover, then I plan for that. But if it's of a destination I want to be at, I normally take a look at the rate for one week at a minimum because they actually give you a better, a lot of places give you a better discount for a week long stay versus a couple day stay. So from there, I will take a look at the surrounding things that I want to do and have kind of an idea of what that is. Now on the next one, the hardest one that I think comes into play that a lot of people normally think about for a second, but kind of shove off to the side is fuel costs. Fuel is a very quick thing that goes in RV because you're getting anywhere from 12 to 18 miles per gallon. You're not going to, it's not fuel efficient. It's just, it's, it is what it is. It's part of the game. So you have to understand that if you have a 95 gallon tank, you're going to have to do the math on what type of fuel, if you're a diesel pusher or if you're a gasser, you, you got to have that kind of idea as to what your fuel expenses are going to be. So it's important to have your budgeting planned out before you get on the road because there's nothing worse than showing up to a place you really wanted to go and you can't experience a lot of the things that you wanted to because the funds just got dried up really fast and you just can't stretch yourself or you don't want to stretch yourself, which I recommend never stretching yourself on finances personally. Um, you're not going to get yourself into that fun. You're going to be more stressed out. You're going to be more conscious of money thinking, oh, well, we can't do this because of this. And it's going to actually ruin your time. And it, it's really not a lot of fun for that. As with most things, if you have a plan and you work your plan, you're going to have a better time of it overall. That makes perfect sense to me. Also, Brian, I wanted to talk a bit about the places themselves. Now, if I'm going to go 300 miles a day, which I think is a wise way to do it because I've just driven in a car eight hours or more in a day, and I just had to 
unpacked myself from the car, never mind my luggage, the end of the day, and I was creaky as could be and cranky as well. And I learned, you know, let's not push it so much. Let's enjoy this drive instead. I get that. If you're going across a place like Montana, and you know, Texas is the obvious choice, yes, certainly. But I've driven through Montana and I found myself because there's such an expanse, it is big sky country after all, that I would choose to be in this place today and I knew I could get as far as uh, Billings, you know, some or down to Bozeman and I would plan accordingly and still intend to get on the appointed day to Yellowstone. So doing that and planning that still gives me the opportunity whether I have my car or not, and that's a choice in itself. It seems like you can choose to see as much of you, as much as you want to see of certain things, knowing that you have to stick to some kind of a schedule, unless this is your total lifestyle and you're living like a vagabond. <laughs> that's such a fun life. And in particular, I also, and now I'm getting down to the finer points here, Brian. There in Montana in particular, I was just driving an SUV, but I wondered how people in an RV, especially the bigger ones, how they would handle going through one of the jewels of the national park system, like Glacier National Park, if they were going to take the famous going to the sun road, I thought, you know, in season, yes. I mean, in winter, probably it's not traversable a lot of the time. But if I'm driving along going to the Sun Road, you would better know what you're doing and be choosy about where you get off, where you get on in order to manage that well. I absolutely agree. You have to know your coach, your size, but you also have to know your limitations. Don't look at something and say, eh, maybe I can make that. Let's see what happens. Because normally when that uh, thought creeps into your mind, you're already about to be in a really bad situation. Yes, yes. And if the sign says well, you're going to stop off and get something to eat, you know, you're tired of using your stove in the RV. So you're going to go and uh, have some nice restaurant food or maybe even fast food. If it says clearance eight feet, it means clearance eight feet. <laughs> it absolutely does. And I cannot tell you the amount of service calls that I have seen uh, amongst a lot of the techs I've uh, crossed paths with get called for the crushed roof and ripped back air conditioner. Oh, wow. That sounds expensive and painful. <laughs> It can be a little pricey. Um, thankfully, a lot of insurance companies are very friendly about it. But uh, yes, it's definitely in the higher thousands of dollars category. In the few minutes that we have left, Brian, what are a few of your favorite places to visit by RV? I, uh, there's a picture that goes with a blurb that we put up uh, online to tout your appearance, right? So with that being the case, you're a guy that you've got a map there, places you've been. It's wonderful to see that in this photo of yourself. And there are stickers that you have. What were some of your favorite places that most people wouldn't necessarily think of, at least in the early going, as places for destinations? They sort of discover them by the by. I will say that the national park system is underrated. Uh, that Those places have been some of our absolute favorite places to go and see. Uh, and that has just been a lot of fun. Acadia National Park in Maine, you're walking around seeing wildlife. You know, we saw plenty of foxes running around. Uh, not something that you see every day where we were in Tennessee at the, uh, prior, prior to that. Uh, Yosemite, of course, everyone wants to go to Yosemite. It's beautiful. But what if you just went south a little bit and you rolled through the Redwood National Forest? Everyone's like, oh, wow, big trees. Well, big trees is one thing. But standing next to the General Sherman, looking up and realizing, OK, you're over what was I believe it's over 2000 years old. That is a serious moment in time. You're like, OK, you've seen some stuff that yes. really makes you feel small. But some of the fun places like Roswell, New Mexico, the home of the uh, the alien stuff. That was a lot of fun. It was so cheesy and so many things that we did. But we also took a road trip right down the road and went to the town where Billy the Kid was famous. We actually got to walk through the old town and walk through the history of it. And it's like, okay, this is really cool. So there are a lot of strange things that you will see, but there's so many fun ones. Uh, and I do always say, take a look at the smaller campgrounds look at a map you could just put up you know hey we're gonna go to billings montana 
love Montana. Unfortunately, we did not get to spend enough time there, so we didn't put the sticker on. But if you were to just RV parks in this area, so many come up, and you can kind of get an idea of what's around them and play around with it. So it's a big world. This country is huge. 3,000 miles to east to west. There are a lot of things in between. Slow down, take it all in, and enjoy the memories. I will say one place that I made a biggest yeah. mistake while traveling, and that was in our first year, we got we hit all four corners of the country. We went way too fast. Once we slowed down, we actually found that we were able to save money and see more things and enjoy our time. So take it in while you can. Don't turbo. Just enjoy. Brian Demo, thank you so much. Great advice. And let's go ahead and uh, just decide that we're going to get together on Trip Talk again and talk about even more places to visit to give people really great ideas about where they can go and live the RV lifestyle. I'll come up with a list. You come up with a list and we'll play mix and match next time you visit the show. Well, sounds like a great time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all having me on. Thanks for letting me talk about JustAnswer.com and talk about my travels as well with you all. Brian Demo of JustAnswer.com. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into American Road Trip Talk. Along with Thomas and Becky Rep, co-founders of American Road Magazine, we remind you to visit our website, AmericanRoadMagazine.com, to preview the current issue. Until next time, dream well and drive safely on the American Road. Hi, everybody. This is Anson Williams from Happy Days, and I'm so excited to tell you about American Road. It is the best car travel magazine in the world. They have the most fantastic adventures detailed in each magazine with all your itinerary. We could just jump in the car with your family and have the most fabulous adventures you've ever had in your life. Please get a copy of American Road and start your own adventure.